Всем добрый день. Hello, and thanks for joining us on the post-coronavirus, on this post-coronavirus course. Today we're going to talk about the crisis as something that can help us. Today with us is Dr. Michael Lightman, and today we're going to talk about the different crises that humanity has experienced, and of course, with today's pandemic that only began, Many think that it ended already, but it's very clear that this is only the beginning. And we'd like to begin our talk with several questions that came on our previous show. Very interesting questions. We talked about the total influence of society over a person. And so the question is, do you think that it is correct to use different manipulations over a person's consciousness, including hypnosis, in order to change social values. I don't think that it's going to help at all, because society doesn't change as a result. It could be hypnotized, so to speak, but it can't change itself. It's possible to change society only under the influence of the external force of nature, where we truly aspire for this, that we're targeted toward it, understanding our current and future states. What is this force? The, this force is the force of nature. We can't find these kinds of forces inside ourselves that we can fight with one force against the other. But in nature, there is the force of good, the force of love that sustains all of nature and develops it. Everything developed from the still, then the vegetative, the animate, and then man. And then, and so this force that all the time develops nature and matter according to its four phases, this enlivening force it, it exists in nature not in us and therefore we have to awaken it upon ourselves and to constantly try to adjust ourselves in what way can we use it in the best possible way yeah, we talked about this, that the ego in and of itself, uh, egoistic matter can't simply exist in and of itself. There has to be some kind of altruistic part in it. We see it in the nature, evolution, good, bad, plus, minus. We talked about this. So you're saying that there is a method that allows every person to draw, awaken the influence of this force upon himself from nature, and accordingly, his worldview will change. Yes? Another question. What is the evil eye? An evil eye, how does it work? Evil eye I consider as public opinion. If it is set poorly against the person, badly against the person, it's a force. Each of us has forces, inner forces. And when we badly think about someone, then as a result of the multitude of all of these bad thoughts and so on, no, comes a bad result. This is the evil eye. The influence of one person or many people, the influence of many people against one person. This can happen. But also, one person can also have such an impact on another person. Yeah. But mainly it's society. Yeah. There are people that can look at another person and that person will get a fever, for example. I saw such people. And so on. We influence each other. All of us are together in uh, the same environment and the same desire. All of humanity is considered as a whole. And therefore, the way we influence each other isn't that impossible. We're in all, we're all in one system, and therefore this already means that we can somehow influence each other. Meaning it's not something supernatural. No, 
But it's simply that a person doesn't have these special givens. Once we have this more, but we don't use this. Can a person develop these abilities? Yes, but for this, you have to go to the KGB, be in certain circles. Is it possible to resist this? Uh, this is also taught there, but not in school. And last question. It said that people use only 5% of the potential of their brain. Could we assume that it is enough in order to serve our animate individual needs? And if we're working on society as a whole, toward society, then we use the rest. To work toward society is when you rise above your ego, accept, take upon yourself those goals that are good for society as a whole, and then then it will be integral and global and it will rise above its ego and will work only in an altruistic key, then yes. Then you will use much more than 5% of your potential. So if I have to solve some little problem of my own by myself, then this potential is enough. But if like now, for example, we have to solve the problem of this pandemic and there is a group of scientists that are trying to find a vaccine for this None of them have this potential, but all of them together, they can connect to some kind of global wisdom or something. Mm, I don't think that it's possible because they're all egoists, each of them working inside himself. Um, for this, one has to rise above himself, what we call love each other, to integrate in one another. How is it that we have such a tremendous potential and we use only 5%? For this, we have to rise above the egoistic nature that we were born in and to acquire a different nature nature, an altruistic one of love another as yourself, and then you connect with others in one whole, in one mind, in one heart. All of your inner parameters, they become common, and this is how you work to everyone's benefit. Okay, I know this is your favorite subject, the crisis, you talked about this in 2008 and even before. The crisis that occurred 10 years ago, even more, 12 years ago, you talked about this even earlier, you went to the UN, to UNESCO, everywhere. Science has developed toward the crisis a conceptual position, that the crisis is a state that every developing system goes through, that the crisis is the combination of two processes, which is both building and destroying. Uh, you can't see a crisis only as a negative phenomenon, and uh, crises, with all the pain that they bring, they progress us. So uh, it's said that the correct proper diagnosis is half the cure. What does a person have to understand? What kind of diagnosis does each of us have to acquire? First of all, you have to enlighten humanity. Explain that we're all in an egoistic nature, and therefore we have to understand that we will have to change it. The entire nature, besides man, is integral and even altruistic. It's integral in our world, the still vegetative and animate nature. Man comes out of it with his ego, 
not willing to yield to anyone. The main thing is that he'll be well off, even if it's to everyone's detriment. This is the state that we exist in. And this state practically exists on part of nature as a given. In order for us to feel the corruptedness and dead end of our existence and development. Right now, and we see this from our development, we came to a state where, that's it, we are starting to destroy the little planet that we're on that can no longer stand us. And here appear very serious problems. Nature is rising against us, starting to very harshly squeeze us, push us, pressure us, trying to force us to change. We don't understand these acts of nature, we don't take them into account, and we continue, we wish to continue our, well, the way we are. Who are we? We are those very limited people walking on to so limited that we're worse than animals. And because uh, the opportunities that we have and everything, we use everything to our own detriment and to the detriment of nature. So if we're talking about the diagnosis of uh, our ego, that our egoistic nature works to the detriment of everything, I think that millions of people understand this diagnosis. And what is a result of them understanding this? They understand and continue. Many, many don't. They understand this. There are many different organizations. We, uh, of course, uh, you can't just say uh, the philosophers think so, but it's millions of people. These organizations, they are the most egoistic. They fight until they're bought and gradually... They quench, they close their mouth, and understand that they have to uh, get along with the rich, and so on. And as you see, everything continues. I, I myself agree that there are those that oppose this, okay. And then there, someone shuts them up. No one publishes them anywhere and so on, and that's how they gradually fade away. I agree that, I know, I'm, uh, there are hundreds and thousands of people that I know, and I did not hear from them any such thoughts like, our ego is to blame for everything, and we're destroying nature. They did not come to this kind of diagnosis, because it means that then they have to change. The rich, not, not the rich, not the powerful, but they have to change. Yeah, this is what we talked about. So the crisis is means a turning point. Uh, in China, these are two symbols. One is chance, the other is danger. This symbolizes crisis in Chinese. What's supposed to be born? A new society, a new man. Every time during um, a crisis, there's a certain turn in our development as a humanity, a certain leap. Why, in all, why do all the prophets describe the future as some kind of apocalypse? Why couldn't they describe some good, nice states? They don't exist or they don't see the future that way. It's because the good next degree in our development can come only under the influence of strong pressure, wars, like the birth of a child, 
uh, through the strong pains of the mother and so on. Meaning a person that understands what society is going through now and it's uh, with this crisis, he's glad about this, but he's concerned with um, those uh, with people, the um, suffering that they're going through and everything. We completely understand the process of a birth of a child, for example. It's very, it's a very complicated experience for a woman's organism, even though that it's completely fit for it. And it's a serious burden on the, uh, the fetus too. That has to go through the birth channels and very serious and squeezed states. Imagine that society has to be born out of nature in such a similar way. Meaning, nature has to squeeze us very seriously in order for us to be want, in order for us to want to be born different. Nature has to push us in order for us to uh, exert a certain amount of efforts in order for us to change, and we have to reach a state where no matter what, we have to leave our comfort zone and to exchange it for pretty uncomfortable external states. So here, there are many problems. And humanity is even looking at the birth of a child with all of our conditions and everything as something unique, not something that's self-obvious. Okay, I understand the process, the process suppose that it's not easy, the process of birth, but why did they write, they wrote about the final state from what I understand, and they always described it as a kind of apocalypse. Yeah, it looks like an apocalypse, because those, those, pressures under uh, which uh, Amber is born have to influence work on human society as they're born into this new degree and will all experience these states as something very unpleasant but the entire problem is for us to teach ourselves to feel this as something necessary if I understand correctly, a child, when he's born, he turns upside down. Yes, he in his mother, he is with his head up, and when he's born, he turns upside down and goes through the birth channels. The parallel between the birth of a child in our world and the birth of society. Uh, we can really compare these things? What does it mean to, uh, what is it to invert our consciousness? Yeah, our consciousness inverts our entire understanding of the world. Uh, birth is con the complete opposite. When a person's born, he's born into a different world. Uh, from our world, he's born into a spiritual world, and that's how he feels. I understand my perception today. I feel this world through five senses. I have a certain, I have certain principles that my perception is based on. What will change? What will I start seeing? You will start seeing the surrounding world in a completely different way. You will start seeing the forces that control it and the ability to influence this world. So there are some hidden forces of nature, some ties between people, and a person will start seeing this, and as a result, if he sees and understands all of this, he will, will start treating each other differently. Yeah. Okay, there are more than 200 physical laws that were revealed in the past few hundreds of years, on the one hand. <laughs> also, there are social laws that we have invented ourselves. 
uh, ethics, uh, even religious laws, state laws, traditions. We invented all of this artificially. Can I assume that this is the reason for all of our crises, suffering, that we ourselves invent these laws? Completely agree, yes. So what does it mean to follow the laws of nature, if so? We do not follow the laws of nature, but we follow our own ego. And our ego isn't directly related to nature. Our ego sets us against nature, doing everything in order for us to destroy nature. So there are certain social laws that we yet have to reveal. Of course, what are these laws of commutation? The laws of the integral society. What is that? The laws of the integral society, meaning when we comprise one whole as nature is, we do not separate ourselves from nature, we do not divide nature into the still vegetative, animate, and human species, but we consider all of it one integral global system that exists and develops inside a person and complete interconnection between all of its parts. And the main thing is that the main law of nature is love, to, meaning to accept everyone and everything and a good and nice attitude towards everyone and everything, meaning that what determines my future state, what determines is I look at how beneficial is something for everyone. I look at nature as an integral system, and what I'm concerned with is for it to be in its best possible state. Can I say that love, uh, it's a feeling, of course, it's a kind of... Uh, a result of the correct relations between people, meaning the measure to which I give to society or to people or whoever, and how much I receive from it, this kind of interaction between two people. As a result, there's this kind mm, I'd characterize it differently. Where every person feels everyone else and tries to do everything in order to fulfill their desires. So you're saying that this is the main law of human society, and we have to reveal it, just like we have revealed all other laws. Not only that we have to reveal this, we have to realize it all the time. This law has to be our life credo. And then all the rest of the laws of ethics, government laws, they'll exist, but they'll take on different forms. Obviously, they all stem from this law of constant coming closer of all parts of creation, rising above the ego, and this way coming to a whole complete internal state. I have a few examples uh, about how the external how the incorrect usage of the relations between us draws or awakens uh, the crisis. It's like when there are tremendous amounts of food being thrown away in order to maintain their price. Or if we're talking about health, then the entire drug industry uh, if, if they can make some kind of drug that can benefit people, but it's not worthwhile, or if people will use some kind of drug, then it's good for them, meaning everything is directed by self-interests and ecology. That's obvious already that the chemical industry every year makes thousands of tons of products that pollute the atmosphere and ecology and everything. And no one even knows what these substances do, what impact do they have, who does all of this. It's done by people without taking any other person into consideration. That's obvious. So the question is, if a person does not understand that the laws of nature are the same laws like the physical laws, how it seems to us that a person can't feel it, he can't see it, he can't take this into consideration, he can't realize this, therefore he doesn't take it into consideration gradually up to the point where as if they don't exist. 
If I do not feel the limited uh, the limitation of a certain force, then for me it does not exist. The ideology of the consumer society, how does it contradict with nature? The thing is that nature is integral. It doesn't do anything just so. For it, at the beginning and middle, doesn't matter what state, these states are objectively necessary and exist only in order to bring nature to a better state in order to for him, for man to do this some kind of action of the kind he has to understand the beginning and the end he has to feel his complete inner connection with nature to understand where he is we don't have that and therefore we orient ourselves only on our ego but the truth is that we have to integrate in nature, with nature, to feel the greatness of its goal and to try and go with it as much as we can. I have a few minutes left, and uh, if we could do a blitz, meaning short questions and answers. On one of our, the, our shows, you said that a person stops following the laws of nature on the level of thoughts and desires. Should he, a person, change himself on this level too? We don't need anything else. Thoughts and feelings, that's what we have. After we start seeing that we are acting incorrectly, then it's in thought, it happens in our thoughts and desires. After that, we change. So we don't have to do anything. Don't do anything at all. The future is not physical. Uh, you said that uh, the virus is afraid of our connection. And we see to the contrary, that in order to be healthy, we have to keep our distance. That's because we're egoists. It's in order not to negatively affect each other and to give the virus uh, and not to make room for the virus. Um, therefore, we have to distance ourselves. We have to change our own perception of other people, and from this new feeling, one or another kind of action will come. Our attitude toward others is what makes us human beings. We advise us not to do anything but to change our attitude. Has that possible without practical actions? No, there have to be practical actions. We have to help each other so that each of us will change his opinion, will constantly change his opinion opinion towards others, about others, for the better. If, under the threat of annihilation, people will understand that we have to fight our own ego, then people will artificially start treating each other as, as if with love. What will this give? It will give, it will attract, draw the force of nature that can elevate us above the ego and give us the ability to use it correctly. Last question. Today, millions of people understand what we're talking about. But to change public opinion is something that only politicians can do, and they legislate the laws, and they're, they're elected uh, through the mass media, and the mass media is in the hands of the rich. The rich don't want to change anything. It's a closed cycle. How do you see the way out? Uh, nature is telling us about the way out. It, one way or another, is bringing us to a big explosion of the ego, um, disappointment, and then we'll be able to change these things. People will get up and change all this. No regime consisting of forces of uh, for power and money will be able to govern the world more than people themselves will want. And people are gradually starting to understand that it's impossible to continue existing this way because this means to destroy nature, ourselves, our children, and we have to do something about this. We're living in such times where these integral 
global blows that the virus uh, is letting us experience or quickly change human opinion about in relation to our attitude to the world, life, and everything will change. So we talked today about the crisis that it can has to also help us so it will change human consciousness without which we can't develop. Undoubtedly. Thank you very much. All the best.